Lord is Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Children's Chapel. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear 
not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though it's also you being saved. 
if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as the first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at a time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the Church of Christ, Church of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether that is what I or they, so I proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John.
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's some nice front row seats, anybody who's willing to take them. Come on. I'll cut the cost on them right now, 100% off. But hallelujah, Christ is risen. Yes, we say that today and we ring our bells as we celebrate the resurrection. We have walked with Jesus through this past week with Palm Sunday, then to Good <coughs> Friday with the crucifixion, to those days in the grave, and we now come to this empty tomb, this great day of celebration and light. After some folks had taken a long Lent, of fasting, and I gotta tell ya, <clears throat> I get to thinking about Easter, and I was thinking about this sermon, and what do I say to these people, and I started thinking about death. You know, have you seen the Barbie movie? <laughs> yeah, when she's dancing around, and she danced with all the other Barbies, and then suddenly she says, hey, do you guys ever think about death? And the music just stops. <laughs> You know, maybe, maybe there's that inner goth kid in me, you know? I do wear black every day, still. <laughs> so, and I, I think I also think about death in association with Easter because in our Book of Common Prayer, when we come to a funeral service, it, for the burial service, there's a note. We have lots of fun notes in the Book of Common Prayer 
My wife says she sometimes reads them during the boring parts of the service. <laughs> I think she might mean the sermon. But, but the notes there on burial say to us that that liturgy, that service of prayer and worship, finds all its meaning in Easter, that it is an Easter liturgy, that it finds its meaning in the resurrection of Christ. Because Christ was resurrected, we too can know resurrection. And so that is a great comfort to us at a burial of people we love, as we say there is this eternal life which they have passed into. And we believe that life continues because of the resurrection. And that's true, and I want to affirm that as, a, as what our faith is about. And I also want to say that eternal life is not just about some life we have after we die in this physical body. In fact, when people ask me if I believe in an afterlife, I say no. And I say no because of my Christian faith. Because of my faith in the resurrection of Christ, I say no, I do not believe in the afterlife. I believe in one eternal life. Life continues. If you were to come to a, a funeral where we had the Eucharist, there's a the proper preface it's called, a, we have a seasonal line we put into the prayer, or an occasional line, and for the burial service, part of that preface says, to your faithful people, O Lord, in death, life is not ended, but changed. Life is not ended, but changed. And that is what we proclaim when we proclaim our faith in the resurrection of Christ. We believe that God took human form in Christ to come live among us, to suffer as we do, to die as we do, and to overcome that and be resurrected, to show that life continues, that love doesn't die. And so we hold to that faith and believe that we share in that eternal life even now. When we come to our prayers later, we'll say that we're singing with the angels and archangels and all those saints in heaven, that we're singing with those people we love, that they are worshiping with us, that life continues. And right now, in this way we're living, in these bodies, and this part of eternal life, we also die in other ways. One of my teachers of late, Richard Rohr, talks about dying before we die. And it's a positive thing in the way he teaches, that we want to die. As the colleague for today said, we die, may we die daily to sin, die daily to those things that separate us from God and from each other. And there are things we need to die to. Maybe, you know, I don't need anybody else to tell me that when I fail, that's the end. Because let me tell you, it's all inside here. The call is coming from inside the house that says, uh-oh, you made a mistake. You let them down. That sermon was awful. You forgot to do the birthday blessings. <laughs> there, it's, it's all over. You can't have that job anymore. You're going to have to go live with mom and dad and, you know, in the backyard probably. And who knows what you want, you know. Made a mistake, you know, getting in an argument with my wife. I think, okay, it's been 27 years, but this could be it. You know, I messed up. It's all over. We do think that, don't we? It's the end. But the resurrection and Easter says, no, it's not the end. When you have failed, when you have made mistakes, when you have made terrible mistakes and failures, that is not the end. That is a moment to die to what was and rise to new life. And as a people, as living together in our world, and we see all the awful things that humanity does to humanity, and that is what we pictured Good Friday on the cross, is what humanity does to humanity. And the resurrection says, that's not the end either. And so many voices in our world want to say, those people like that will never change. 
Those folks will always be like that, whether those folks of that other religion or that other skin color or that other way of choosing who they love than what I have. Well, they'll never change, and they're, and they're probably the root of all the problems in the world, too. That's the other message we get. Those folks who are different than us, and those poor people, well, they just make choices, and they're living with their choices. And what can we really do? And all this war and violence, it's a complicated issue. I really can't take a, take a stand and speak out and say there's an injustice. And this is just the way it is. The resurrection says, no, that is not the end. That is not the end. There is life that can come and we can know healing and forgiveness and peace and reconciliation those things, we must die to those ways of seeing the world that say we must cut others off. And believe me, I know that religious traditions, the Christian church writ large, has been a big actor in judging a lot of folks. Now, I don't want to just pick on us, because secular culture is pretty good at it too. You know, this sort of, hey, if you don't tick all the boxes, then you can't, you're not right. If you don't believe all these things and support all the causes I do, then you're wrong and, in fact, probably evil, seems to be the popular message today. And we say, no, that's not true. Even that person that I want to think is evil because they don't think like me. There's hope. There's hope for me to be transformed and see them in a different way and hope for them to be transformed and have some hope. It's not the end. <clears throat> and maybe even we, one of the, some of the other things we die to is even how we think about God and how God works in the world. And at Easter and around Holy Week and all this time, that message gets stirred up that's so prevalent in our culture about what all this means. Even folks who don't go to church and haven't had much exposure to Christianity in our culture have been exposed to the message that what the cross is about is that God is really angry about how bad humans are. And God, apparently, needs blood to be satisfied. And so there's a sacrifice that must be offered. And so God filled in that sacrifice with his son because God is so angry. And if we didn't have that, it was this emergency plan, you know? But no, nope, I'm not buying it. I'm going to die to that message and say, and rise again to the message that says, no, no, from the beginning, God planned to be a part of God's creation, planned to be close to God's creation so much so as to suffer and to die, to say, I'm with you and I love you. Because it's humanity who demands the sacrifice. It's humanity. We're the ones who cut people off because they don't believe like us. Or we exclude ourselves and cut ourselves out and say, well, because of these things, I can't be close to God and know God's love. And God comes in and intercedes and says, no, I'm going to bridge that gap and come in. And I'm going to take what you do to each other upon myself and show you that there is life beyond even that 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 is not the end, and you don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. You don't have to get right with God. God has come to make things right with us. And that is the message of Easter, that all of those things that would separate us from each other and from God and that we believe are death and the end, God says that is not the end. There is a life, an eternal life that we join in even now. Even now, an eternal life as we, do, as we die to those messages of fear and despair and we say, yes, we can feed those hungry people. We can seek solutions for our neighbors sleeping on the streets. We can seek solutions and peace for all this violence. We can have reconciliation and forgiveness. And it is hard, and it is confusing, and it is challenging, and our God is with us, and our God has entered into the hardness and depth of the suffering and struggle for that. 
to bring life and hope and healing to the world. So today, as we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, may we be reminded that this word to us today is that death is not the end, and there are many kinds of deaths that we must willingly walk into to die to those old ways that separate us from God and each other and know God, resurrected in a body, come to be with us, making things right, bridging that gap, bringing us all together in eternal life right now. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into the grave. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the everlasting. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will go with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. The prayers of the people, Form 3. <clears throat> Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Amen. For our brothers and sisters in the Anglican Communion, especially the province of the West Indies, in our Diocese of East Tennessee, Resurrection in Loudoun, and in our companion diocese of South Dakota, St. Paul in Norris, Trinity in Mission, and St. Thomas in Corn Creek. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, 
Brian, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern, especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, India, our city mayor, and Glenn, our county mayor, and all who hold authority in the nations of the world. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life especially St. James Nursery and Youth Ministry, Teresa De Rosa, Diane Dixon, and Susan and Boyce Driscoll, Driscoll. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to St. James. In particular, I want to welcome you if you're a guest with us today. And if you are a guest, uh, we do have, the ushers have some cards in the back they could give you. Uh, if you want to leave your information and maybe be on our mailing list, um, learn more about what happens in and from this place. Um, so many people have worked together to make this Easter day happen. And so thank you all. And as we gather today, I'm excited. Um, some of you may not have been here in a little bit, and uh, the place looks different from last Easter. Uh, we did finish our major renovation, celebrating our centennial, and dedicated that in uh, September. Uh, celebrated 100 years of ministry here, and you can see some of the work we've done. You can see that also with these new chairs that people have given in memory or in thanksgiving for someone, and if you're reminded of that today and would like to honor someone, um, we have some forms for that in the back. You could do that uh, and help support um, and pay for this renovation we did that helps us do the, our ministry here in this community. Um, as we come today to celebrate here at the altar, we bring uh, our offerings and we also want to bless uh, those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. So if you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary and you'd like to come forward, you can do that. I'll offer a blessing, come right here, and while those folks are coming, I'll tell you about this quilt up here. So, um, some of you know that in the Great Depression, there was a movement, sort of a fundraising movement among churches and community organizations uh, that had people sign their, their name, and those patches were put on quilts, and St. James did one of those. Um, 
in the 30s, and then uh, we did one in 1985, and so we did one with our centennial, and it's been completed and pieced together, and it's here on the altar, and I'm going to bless these birthday folks, and then we'll say a blessing on that as well. Um, and then also, the big uh, directions you're all waiting for are uh, after the service is over, um, you can, um, there's going to be an Easter egg hunt in the playground for those five and under, which the best way to go there is to go in the parish hall door back here and go through the parish hall for that. And then here in the courtyard in the middle, the six-year-old and up, uh, those folks will be there hunting eggs. So that's for those youngsters who are going to hunt. Uh, that's where it's happening. And for us older folks, be careful. Uh, so, uh, but let us bless these folks celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of time, that in time you've come to us in Jesus, your Son. We especially thank you for those who come standing before us now to celebrate the anniversary of birth and of relationship. May they continue to know your blessing. Know your Christ filling them, making them witnesses of your love, your hope, your healing in the world. We ask this blessing in the name of the one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'll say a, a blessing prayer for this quilt as well. So let us pray. God, we thank you for the witness of this community, St. James. And we thank you for all those who have signed this quilt and given to the work of your church here. We ask your blessing on this quilt, on all who signed it, and all who see it, and all who come to this place that they might know your love and saving embrace. We ask this in the, na in the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Eucharist, and you are invited to receive, if you desire to receive Christ in the sacrament. Um, when the ushers direct you forward, you can come to either side and stand or kneel here. We'll also be using the chapel altar if you want to go over to the chapel here to my right. Um, when you come, you can stand or kneel and extend your hands to receive the bread, which you can consume then. Um, and then when the cup comes by, just gently guide that to your lips and to have a sip of wine there. Or you can hold on to the bread and then dip it lightly in the wine and consume it. Uh, we also believe just to receive the bread is to fully receive the sacrament. If for whatever reason you don't want to receive the Eucharist but would like a blessing, you can come forward and cross your arms at the altar. We'll give you a blessing. And if you're unable to come forward for whatever reason, let one of the ushers know when they come by and we will come bring communion to you. But know that you are welcome to receive here today. Walk in love as Christ loved us.
Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing the sin to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, 
He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose again for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Almighty and ever living God, we thank you. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and evermore. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.